Hello and welcome to AHAVTS.com Clipcast on Cisco Nexus 7000 Virtual Device Context. My name is Aleem HLE. <laughs> and oh, by the way, I'm this handsome gentleman to the right. And in this Clipcast, we'll be talking about what is a virtual device context and their benefits with respect to the Cisco Nexus Data Center architecture. So, let's get started. In the IT world today, the data center and its viability is a hot ticket. Today's data centers need to be resilient, redundant, and have some sort of protection and or separation. For example, resiliency can be accomplished by the usage of fiber optic cables, which are hard to tap into and not prone to the effects of EMI as twisted pairs are, and port channeling in the event of a link failure. Redundancy can be accomplished by, but not limited to, the usage of dual supervisors, in the case of Catalyst 6500 chassis for unexpected soup failure, redundant chassis for unexpected chassis failure, multiple paths for routing decisions, and VSS pairing for the usage of multi-chassis ether channels. And on the protection side, VRFs can be used for distinguished routing tables, MD5 hashing can be used for routing neighbor relationships, and VLANs can be used for layer 2 isolation. And of course, between each lane in your data center architecture, you may have a firewall or two that are needed to filter out traffic between zones and or other networks. Now, all of this sounds pretty cool, right? But you're going to need this at the enterprise core, distribution, and access layer too. And let's not even talk about the server farm environment. As you can see, the footprint of the data center environment can get quite large if you've scaled incorrectly. In this day and age where costs are scrutinized drastically, data centers are no exception. So how are we going to decrease costs such as HVAC, power consumption, spacing, hardware purchase, and etc.? Well, to alleviate some of the mention, Cisco came up with the concept of virtual device context. A virtual device context, or VDC for short, allows for the partitioning of a single physical device, in this case a Cisco Nexus 7000, into multiple logical devices. And currently, the maximum number of VDCs that a Cisco Nexus 7000 can support are eight non-default VDCs and one admin VDC using a SOUP 2E. Now, each VDC is a virtualized entity that can be provisioned, configured, and managed as if it was a separate physical device. So what does that mean? Well, it means I can have eight different networks or the same network, for example, the 10 slash 8 network, and one admin network with their own routing and switching capabilities and port designations, running on a single Cisco 7000 chassis with other VDCs having no knowledge of each other. This also means that the VDC provides what I think no other chassis can provide is fault isolation. Meaning, if a fault occurs, say a routing failure or layer 2 loop or a black hole occurs, no other environment is affected. It's only isolated to that one VDC. Where unlike a single chassis, a failure of any kind would affect the entire chassis. So let's get back to some of the constraints I mentioned before. The first one is spacing. VDCs can be used to recoup square foot space. One Cisco Nexus 7000 chassis, for example, using three VDCs can recover 200% of chassis space. How? Well, it eliminates the needs for these other chassis since it can be virtualized within a single device. The next one is power. This is reduced drastically since you're operating fewer chassis in your data center environment. Next, HVAC. Now, although HVAC is tied into power, this cost is also reduced since the amount of devices to be cooled has been lowered. And hardware. Hardware costs are also reduced as well since again we have fewer chassis which reduces the overall number of line cards needed, GBICs, and anything of the like. And your return on investment has increased, all the while still maintaining resiliency, redundancy, and data protection separation in your data center environment. Well, it seems like virtual device contexts are the next big thing in the Cisco world and possibly for the overall data center environment. In this clipcast, we talked about what is a virtual device context and the benefits with respect to the Cisco Nexus data center architecture. You can visit www.aha-vts.com for more clips, flicks, clipcasts, and much, much more.
I hope this clipcast on Cisco Nexus 7000 virtual device context was enjoyable, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.